Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. Today, I'll be going on a rant about my biggest oral path pet peeve. But first, we have to get in that disclaimer and that is that all of the opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. And with that being said, let's get into the rant. All right, we need to talk about thrush. Thrush is probably one of the most common reasons someone was referred to my practice. But most of the time, the patient does not have thrush. In this video, we will discuss the most common misdiagnoses mistaken for thrush, and we'll be discussing what to actually look for when making a thrush or candidiasis diagnosis. It seems like whenever a patient has visual or symptomatic changes in the mouth, many practitioners unfamiliar or uncomfortable with oral pathology always blame it on thrush, put the patient on an antifungal medication, be it a mouth rinse, a lozenge, or trochee, or a pill, and the patient doesn't improve. It's often because the patient never had thrush in the first place. The three most common misdiagnoses in this scenario are coated tongue, geographic tongue, and burning mouth syndrome. Coated tongue is extremely common. The superficial coating can be derived from the combination of food debris, bacterial debris, and desquamated epithelial cells or dead cells from the lining of the mouth. This white coloration is not related to a candidiasis and will not resolve with antifungal treatment. This coating can usually be removed with light brushing of the tongue when one brushes their teeth. However, vigorous scrubbing and scraping may result in further hyperkeratosis of the tongue, resulting in an even thicker white coating or even a hairy tongue. The thing that really makes me angry is that when you Google thrush, most of the image results that pop up are actually pictures of coated tongue and aren't thrush at all. This really confuses the issue and can cause serious doubt from patients. Geographic tongue or benign migratory glossitis is also fairly common and some argue that it too is a variation of normal. Geographic tongue presents as a serpiginous or snake-like white lines bordering red or denuded papilla. The presentation of the geographic tongue will likely change over time, swirling and changing shapes like making new landmarks on a map. The presentation will become more or less apparent without any known etiologic link. For most patients, this condition is completely asymptomatic. However, some patients experience symptoms when eating certain foods like those of citrus fruits, including tomatoes. Symptomatic patients often benefit from application of topical corticosteroid gel as needed for symptoms. On histologic examination of geographic tongue under the microscope, we see findings similar to psoriasis, which we call psoriasiform mucositis. Recently, I examined a young man in his early 20s who was told that his geographic tongue was candidiasis. Because the candidiasis did not clear after several different rounds, classes, and types of antifungal medication, the patient was told that he may have HIV AIDS or an immunosuppressive autoimmune disease. The patient actually had innocuous geographic tongue that really only bothered him when he ate certain foods. He was worked up for HIV and immunosuppression and lived in a state of uncertainty for several months, which is obviously very distressing. He was understandably relieved when he received a proper diagnosis and treatment, as well as reassurance that there was nothing wrong with his immune system. And the last most common condition often misdiagnosed as candidiasis is burning mouth syndrome. Clinicians often wrongly attribute the burning sensations experienced by the patient as candidiasis, despite the lack of clinical findings. I have a full video discussing this condition, which I encourage you to review using the link on this video and in the description below. Many other conditions with white changes have been wrongly attributed to yeast overgrowth, like leukoplakia, 
like in Planus, and cheek chewing or Morsicatio vaccarum. But the three I reviewed are by far the most common misdiagnosed in my experience. So what is thrush then? Thrush is the colloquial or common name for candidiasis. Candida albicans and the candida genus of fungus are commensal organisms, meaning that they live naturally in the oral cavity of certain people. If we were to go into a yeast culture in the vast majority of people in the world, about a third or so are going to have a positive culture, meaning they have yeast in their mouth. But that doesn't mean that they're symptomatic or that they require treatment. The yeast is just there and living a happy life and not causing any issues. If there is a candidal overgrowth, that's when patients start having symptoms and should be treated. Candidiasis is often considered an opportunistic overgrowth. Our oral microbiome should exist in a state of balance, where there are many different types of organisms living in harmony. If something happens to disrupt the harmony, like overuse of antibiotics, xerostomia, or immunosuppression, the candida that naturally lives in the mouth can take over. Candidiasis presents in two forms, pseudomembranous candidiasis and erythematous candidiasis. Pseudomembranous candidiasis, which is what most people think of when they think of thrush, presents as cheesy cottage cheese-like plaques that are wipeable from the mucosa. Erythematous candidiasis, which is much more common and often the version with the most symptoms, presents with red change. The more common patterns of this type include denture stomatitis, which presents as redness in the shape of a removable prosthesis, which requires treatment both of the tissue and the prosthesis, and median rhomboid glossitis, also called central papillary atrophy, which exhibits a diamond-shaped area of redness and denuded papilla in the back mid-tongue. Median rhomboid glossitis can present with a kissing lesion on the palate that matches up directly with the median rhomboid glossitis. The most severe presentation of erythematous candidiasis, which can present as complete depapillation and redness of the tongue, may follow antibiotic use. There are a few syndromes associated with candidiasis, like APECED, or APICED, which stands for Autoimmune Polyendocrinopathy Candidiasis Ectodermal Dystrophy. That was a mouthful. But we'll save that for a future syndrome series video. Link to these videos below and in the bio. Fortunately, oral candidiasis responds very well to treatment, which can include an Istatin rinse, which is often swish and spit, though can be swallowed if there are throat symptoms, clotrimazole trochies or lozenges, which usually require use five times a day, or diflucan or fluconazole pills. Dosage will depend on the duration and severity of the overgrowth. So there you have it, my oral path pet peeve make sure that you're rendering the most accurate diagnosis possible at all times. Know that a positive culture is not indicative of an overgrowth, which requires specific findings and symptoms, and make sure that you're not confusing thrush or candidiasis, which is relatively uncommon, with way more common conditions like coated tongue, geographic tongue, and burning mouth syndrome. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please help spread the word by liking, dropping a comment below, and sharing with a friend. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as we continue to inch closer to 1,000 subscribers. Thanks again for watching and be well.